In this video, we will look at how you can do circuit analysis using Laplace transforms. The beauty of this approach is that it converts analyzing circuits that have um, capacitors and inductors in them from a process where you have to find differential equations and solve them to a process where you can use the same techniques that you used to analyze resistive circuits, things like voltage dividers, current dividers, nodal analysis, all of that good stuff that you hopefully already know about circuit analysis, you can use directly to solve circuits with capacitors and inductors. And the thing that makes this work is uh, using Laplace transforms, we get a relationship be between voltage and current for a, a capacitor or voltage and current for an inductor that looks a lot like the relationship between voltage and current for a resistor. And so you're essentially using Ohm's law and all of the good stuff that comes from Ohm's law to do your circuit analysis. So let's begin by looking at um, this table that I've prepared. We have time and Laplace. So this is a time domain and this is the Laplace domain. We have a voltage source. In the time domain, the voltage source just has a voltage V of T. In the Laplace domain, the voltage source has a voltage V of S, which is the Laplace transform of V of T. Similarly, in a current source, we have a current I of T, and that current in the Laplace transform domain is just I of S, where I is the Laplace transform of I, I of T. With a resistor, and I'll try to make this look a little less ugly. The idea behind a resistor in the time domain, the voltage across the resistor is equal to the resistance times the current. Well, we can take the Laplace transform of both sides of this equation, and we get the Laplace transform of the voltage across the resistor is R times the Laplace transform of the current. So resistors work exactly the same in the Laplace transform domain as they do in the time domain. So you may at this point be saying, well, what's the big deal? This is all looking the same. Well, let's bring up the capacitor and the inductor. And this is where stuff starts to get a little weird. But hang in there, it'll work out great. So in the time domain, I have an inductor with inductance L. And I know that the voltage across this inductor is equal to L di dt. So the voltage is equal to L times the derivative of the current. So if I take the Laplace transform of both sides of this equation, the voltage across the inductor just transforms from V of T to V of S. But now if I take the Laplace transform of L times the derivative of I, I get a term S times L, where the S comes from the derivative of I, the L is the thing that's multiplying the, the di dt, times I of S. So you can see that this part of the equation, where I have V of S is equal to S L I of S, this now looks a lot like um, Ohm's law, in the sense that in Ohm's law, the voltage and the current are proportional, and that constant of proportionality is R. In this case, the voltage and the current are also proportional, but that proportionality, the constant of proportionality is now S times L. Now I also have to take into account the initial conditions. So when I do the Laplace transform of this derivative, I have to include the initial current at time 0 minus, and because it's multiplied by L, I get an L out here. So if I now look at how this would be represented in terms of a circuit, I have an inductor, and the inductor has, you might want to call it a resistance, but we actually call it an impedance of S times L. So that represents this part of the equation. In addition, I have to get the voltage across the inductor. I have to subtract off this term due to the initial condition, and that's what's happening here. I have a uh, 
L times I of 0 minus voltage source. You'll notice that the polarity here is uh, opposite to the overall polarity that we've described here. And that represents the initial voltage due to the current, or due to the initial current. If um, you have a situation where the initial current is zero, then of course this term goes away and you're left with something that looks just like uh, Ohm's law, except that you have R replaced by SL. Okay, let's look at the capacitor. We get the same sort of thing. We have a capacitor of capacitance C. In the time domain, the voltage across the capacitor is equal to 1 over C times the integral of the current from minus infinity up to T. So this integral of the current is actually the charge that's been stored in the capacitor by the current, and then 1 over C converts charge to voltage. I take the Laplace transform of this. V becomes V of S. The integral, um, 1 over C times this integral, becomes 1 over C times S times I. So again, you can see that I have a term here that looks a lot like resistance does in Ohm's law. And this is the impedance of the capacitor. I also have this term out here. You'll recall that uh, the Laplace transform of an integral, if you're doing the one-sided Laplace transform, includes um, the 1 over s times the integral, or 1 over s times the uh, Laplace transform of the thing you're integrating, plus 1 over s times the integral from minus infinity to 0 minus of i. So the integral from minus infinity to 0 minus of i, that would look like this, This is just the charge deposited in the capacitor from minus infinity, so from before time begins up until uh, time zero minus. If I take this and multiply by 1 over C, this is going to give me the voltage at time zero minus. Because, again, I have the charge up till time zero minus multiplied by 1 over C, that's the initial voltage. And the 1 over s, again, comes from the fact that the initial condition, uh, or that when I take the Laplace transform of an integral, I get 1 over s times the initial value. So if I now look at this in terms of a circuit, the 1 over sc becomes the impedance of the capacitor, and 1 over s times v0 is again a voltage source that's due to the initial the initial voltage across the capacitor. So hopefully this made a little bit of sense. Let's go quickly through an example of how to use this, and this will be a fairly simple example. Uh, more complex examples may follow if I can actually get my act together enough to put them together. So let's look at a simple RC circuit. So this is going to be my source voltage. This is a resistor. This is a capacitor. And in order to make this simple, I'm just going to pick some numbers out of the air for these two values. Let's have the resistor be 2 ohms and the capacitor be 3 farads. This is not at all um, realistic. A 3 farad capacitor is huge, but it gives us numbers that are more or less easy to work with. And let's suppose that I am interested in finding the voltage across the capacitor. Let's furthermore suppose that the initial voltage across the capacitor is zero. Okay, so I'm making this as easy as I possibly can. We'll come back um, in another video and go through some more complex cases. So the first thing I do then to solve this circuit in the Laplace transform domain is convert uh, capacitances and inductances 
into impedances and change my sources and other voltages into Laplace versions of those sources or other voltages. So the source voltage becomes V sub S of S, uh, V sub C becomes V sub C of S, R stays the same, so that's going to be 2 ohms, and the impedance of the capacitor becomes 1 over 3 times S. That's the impedance of this capacitor. Okay, so I want to find the voltage from here to here. Oh, and I should point out that because I've assumed that the initial voltage is zero, since I've assumed this, I don't have any uh, additional voltage source to put in here. So I don't have to worry about an additional voltage source. Okay, so to find the voltage across the capacitor, I can use a voltage divider. I have this voltage V of S from here to here. I have a resistor in series with the capacitor. So the voltage divider tells me that V sub C, this voltage from here to here, is equal to the voltage across the two elements in series, which is V sub S, times, in this case, the impedance of the unit of the element that I'm looking at the voltage across, which is 1 over 3s, divided by the sum of the two um, impedances. So I have 2 plus 1 over 3s. And I can simplify this to say Vs. And by multiplying top and bottom by 3 times s, I get 1 over 6s plus 1. Okay, so to see what the actual uh, response would look like, suppose that Vs is, oh here, we'll uh, make another beautiful color here. Okay, Vs of t, let's assume that it's the unit step function, just for the sake of seeing how the circuit responds to the unit step function then Vc of S is going to be 1 over S times 6S plus 1. Taking the inverse Laplace transform of this, and I won't go through the steps of doing this, uh, you compute a partial fraction expansion and so on, we get that Vc of T is 1 minus E to the minus T over 6 and all of this has to be multiplied by u of t because we're using the one-sided Laplace transform. So you can see that this is really pretty easy. Um, all of the circuit analysis techniques that I um, know and love to use, like voltage dividers, uh, nodal analysis, all of that still works just fine. And in subsequent videos, we'll do a uh, one or more more complex examples just to prove that it really is a good idea.